ಪೂರ್ಣಶುದೇವಾಶ್ರುತಂ ದೇವ ಕಂಸಾನುರಮರ್ದನ ದೇವಕಿ ಪರಮಾನಂದ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಬಂದೇ ಜಗದ್ಗುರು ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಐ ಸಲ್ಯೂಟ್ ಭಗವಾನ್ ಶ್ರೀಕೃಷ್ಣ ವಿತ್ ದ ಸನ್ ಆಫ್ ಬಾಸುದೇ and the destroyer of the demons kangsha and the darling of mother devaki did and is the leader and the guru of the entire universe i salute him again and again from peace 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 so we are in the bhagavata and here we are brahma <clears throat> was asked by narada narayana's glory and what is the glory and how this universe has come that was the question and there we have read that the drubba that is or the matter with the elements of the combination that which are made that is one element karma or the impressions of the past actions leading to the formation of different kinds of bodies and kala the time which is the framework of all experience and swabhava the nature of individual this and the jiva all these entities what we find none of them are in of any independent characteristic they are all dependent dependent on narayana that is the glory of narayana that means all this creation which is characteristics the main matter is to which this is created the material and the all the activities of the people going on or people not plant animal uh, amoebic level bacterial level to the grand manifestation like dinosaur etc everywhere they are prompted by their back their karma and it has happened in particular time that's why kala comes everything in the universe is happening in time that kala they are not separate from the lord of creation the adi nath or narayana narayana means narana mayana the end the the culmination the destination of nara all all created beings and this swabhav each individual we have our different nature every type of species has their own nature and in that nature also individual and in that same species we are human how many nature we carry satyikonechar rajasikonechar tamasikonechar and in that satyik is not all satyik in the same level all these differences we find these are there all in the narayana and the individual self you me kal jiva none of these have any existence other than their own independent and they are not independent other than that of the lord which is called narayana here and that verse is beautiful where it says narayana para beda deva narayana gaja narayana para loka narayana para makha narayana paro jugo narayana param tapa narayana param gyanam narayana paragati <clears throat> there is nothing but narayana the vedas owe their existence to narayana even vedas vedas are the expressed words of creation but that's origin comes from narayana gods and goddesses the devas all aspects they are nothing but narayana in different form all the worlds manifest in the only narayana all worship what is going on in the universe they are inspired by narayana all yogas become meaningful 
in reaching the Lord Narayana. All austerities become significant only due to Narayana. Knowledge is best on Narayana and Gati, the final destination of all beings, also Narayana. So we have read those. <coughs> that creates a deep emotion in our heart. That gives the idea that everything comes out of God. But now, because we are reading this book, we are talking about Narayana glory. But if you read Shiva Purana, then they will say all oh, everything is Shiva. Uh, so then get confused. Ramakrishna said it is only different names only you are giving to the same reality, whose manifestation is all this. So that is the reconciliation. Otherwise, you become fanatic. And fanaticism is very bad. And even this, even Shaiva goes with the Shakta. Shaiva, which goes with the Narayana devotees, Shiva devotees. They fight with each other. Uh, the Shakta, the mother worshippers, they fight with others. Because that is the only. But it is only name. Say you say Ma, you call Narayana, you call Brahma. When you are, which, who, is, who is your ideal, chosen ideal? So you will, you will grow in love for the chosen ideal if you know the glory of that. That that same chosen, in another name it is Brahman. Brahman has become everything that you can accept. That's so why Vedanta reconciles everything. That if you forget this reconciliation, then you are in deep difficulty because you are confusing yourself that there is a one entity, Narayana, another entity, Brahma, another. Yes, there are in the hierarchical creation, but it is all the same Satchidananda aspect hiding behind it. So all your karma, you are thinking your karma, you are nothing. Even your individual karma, where it comes from, its own original source is Maya. In the Maya, all this ignorance and ignorance created three gunas, three gunas in varieties of gunas, kama, karma, uh, sabhava, etc., drabbo. Uh, that's why they say, what are the 24 cosmic principles? We always say, oh, five elements, air, space, water, etc., etc., five elements. Five organs of perception, five organs of the senses. So these are all division you are making. But their root is what? It's coming from original. It's called the Maya or ignorance. Huh? And when it manifests, it manifests in different ways. Then Mano, Buddhi, Chitta, Hankara, four, mind, intellect, ego, etc. So these are the divisions to make us understand that this creation world is with so many varieties, but there are root. Some say 24 principles. Some say don't think about three. That is Sattara, and Tamas. They try to understand the creation theory at that point. Someone say, why to bother about that? These are only name and form. So it is Satchidananda with name and form. So main point is that there is but one reality behind and that is to be understood. But you are a lover of Rama, you think Rama, Rama, Rama. Rama is everywhere. And Rama is in the water, Rama is in the sky, Rama is in the human personality, Rama is uh, looking in, in the heart, sitting in the heart of all. Whatever you say, say, what is the problem? You see Rama, that is the point. When Rama being everywhere, and when Krishna being everywhere, where Christ being everywhere, so how the thing will be different? Everywhere. Only one thing can remain. All the 24 thousands of things cannot stay there. These are all varied manifestation of the one. Eko vaham bhushyamo prajayeti Upanishad declares, I am alone. I was the only person, only reality. Eko vaham bhushyamo. He only plans, I will be many. And Prajaya, yeah. Now we are in the creation. That is, oh my God, who created? How? How is created now? So naturally, our question to make us understand, they are using these varied types of language: Swabhavo, Kalo, Karma, Drabbo. That's all different things which we are related with. Our samskaras, our karma, because we.
karma or samskaras propellers to go in one direction. So all this context we are reading. So <coughs> lastly we said, verse number 20 we read, the Lord who is beyond the purview of the senses, die. who is Lord who is beyond means who is Brahman. And because purview of the senses, our sense organs can purview only duality, become in, in, inferable by his devotees to the signs of his mystery revealed to the play of the three gunas. And we see the play of the three gunas, naturally you put a question, who is behind these three gunas? And that's when devotee sees it is the play of the Lord, one Lord. God, Lord, and all, O oh Narada, He is, He means this Narayana, here we are naming Him as Narayana. He is verily the master of myself, means Brahma. You are glorifying me, I am nothing. Behind me, the power of Narayana is there, and you, you should know that is the only reality. Huh? So if someone says only reality, you are saying Narayana, no, 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 it is wrong. It is Shiva, Shiva. Let us go and go and fight. So this is the problem. That's why Vedanta should be the background. Ramakrishna said that's right in his gospel. Keep the knowledge of Advaita, Nandual, eh? in your destination, in your focus. And then do your sadhana and practice everything. You will never be confused. Otherwise, see the world is full of fanatics. Uh, everyone is saying my path is the final path. No? And you have to follow my path because you are going wrong. So what shall I do? I, I shall not do meditate. I shall not pray. I shall take a sword and call chop your head. Because you are not you are going wrong. It is my duty to bring you to the right path. This is the nonsense of spirituality, no? And if it is so, you realize God. Finish your purpose is done. Who has given you the authority to correct me? Let me go to hell. I will suffer. You, why are you are bothered about? Why are you making my life hell here? Being spiritual. <laughs> so that's the problem of life, no? So that's why this Vedanta should be the guiding force behind. Then we know this matters little. Uh, you call water, aqua, pani, jal. You are drinking the same thing in the, the hot summer. It will quench your thirst. That's the point. Uh, we should not fight. I am thirsty, you are thirsty. Uh, ten people are standing there and ten language, a yeah, world language and speaking. I want, I want water. I want someone say, I want pani. I want apa. I want jal. I don't know what? You want jal? You are wrong. I am wanting uh, pani. I am right. I am asking water. That is right. You are wrong. And go on fighting each other and all being thirsty. And keep your thirst as it is. So that is the uh, reason the scriptures has to be understood in the right perspective. Now this <coughs> 21 verse we are going through. These are also ex a more explanation of this philosophy of creation. That was the question put before Lord, Lord Brahma by Narada. 21st verse. <clears throat> it starts with, He, the Lord of Maya. Who is Lord of Maya? Here it is Narayana. And when Vedanta will say, Who is the Lord of Maya? Brahma. Simple. And the Lord of Maya, that's why it's called Maya Dhisha. Avatara is called the Maya Dhisha. Maya Dhisha. And we are Maya Dhina. Odhina. We are under the spell of Maya and he is the controller of the Maya. It is his Maya, magician. Magician has the power of magic power, magical power. And he befools thousands of people by his magic. But he's the master of the magic. He has the control over the end of what he's showing. But we, we ordinary people are spellbound. Oh my God. 
uh, what miracle he is showing in front of so many people in broad daylight that uh, giving uh, impossible things, making possible. No? So, he, the Lord of Maya, being desirous of manifesting as many of the powers of Maya, took up. Maya manifested by his magical power. Brahman, if we say instead of Narayana, then it will be Vedanta Bhukta. If it is put Narayana, then it's called the Bhagavat. So Narayana, by his power, Maya, Maya Udhisha, the master of the Maya, took up Kala. Kala means the time. Karma, efficiency, efficiencies of work, and somehow the nature that approached him without any effort on his part. As if these are three entities. No? One is time, we call time space causation normally we say. Here it is said there is the time, and next is the karma, the efficiencies of the action. The whole world is activity. No? When it was non active, it was Brahman. When it becomes activated, then the whole creation comes. Karma, efficiencies of the work, and somehow the nature that all these as if approached to Narayana without any effort. He only thought, and then these entities, that means that was the potential power tried spontaneously came. The, it keeps a different concept about creation. We create anything, we had to do much effort. To create this temple, it was a heavy effort. You have to collect funds, you have to make a plan, get it approved, and then so much of engineers and, and what do you call the architect, this, that, I, so much of activity, net result is this. But when God does that, it does not need any power. It's spontaneous. He says and it happens. That is the power of Hmm? And those who are supposed musicians. Musician, the power of music, singing is inherent in him. He is spontaneous. If they are good musicians, you need not have to ask them anything. Whatever they sing, if they sing loudly, then you will be charmed. But it is his potential, it is the control over them. The music, over the music. So, Kama, Kala, Kala is the time, karma is the efficiency of work, and somehow these three things, as if approached the Narayana, who is the master of all creation, without any effort on his part. So the Upanishad says, Epo ham Shama, I shall I am one, I shall be many. And as soon as he said, Prajayati, and whole creation came into existence. How the whole existence came without any effort. Because he's so powerful, only his thought itself gets expressed. And you know, we may say how it how it happens. It is possible. You can just um, consider yourself when you are in dream state. Huh? Is it not your thought which manifests as a dream? Did the entire dream world is created by whom? Where the sun comes in your dream, where the people are fighting or people are going to temple come in your dream, you are also one of them in the dream. Who created your mind? Only one thought of your mind is creating so much. So why not God's mind can create everything? But the point. So we may think of how this spontaneously coming to them and not, we are not. Yes, your mind is working. Your mind works when you are in dream. And the entire dream world you create by mere wish. Your thought only takes a expression. So it is God's thought. Narayana's thought. I thought I will be many. I will create. This much is the desire in the mind. That's why it's called the cosmic mind. Created in the cosmic mind. Individual mind is here. And that is the cosmic mind through which your mind, my mind, every mind added together, the whole universe, stars and galaxies, everything created in the cosmic mind. Associated with the Supreme Being, time became capable 
of disturbing the equilibrium of the gunas. When Kala came, the time came, being connected with Narayana or say simply Brahman, Brahman is all Satchidananda consciousness, being associated with that supreme being, time now became capable of disturbing the equilibrium of the gunas. Gunas, what are these gunas? Three gunas. We are reading very high Vedanta here. Though it is a book of bhakti, uh, sometimes we, we have to doubt whether it is a bhakti book or a gyanu book. So equilibrium <coughs> of the gunas. What are the gunas? We know three gunas. And when they are in perfect balance, there is no creation. When this balance comes, then comes the reaction. Eh? Sattika manifestation more. When Sattva is more, when Rajas is more, Tamas and Rajas are, and Sattva is less. That is another manifestation. So the three gunas, when it's the perfect balance, no creation. The disbalance comes there, then is the creation. And the swabhava of the evolving into categories. Swabhava. Everyone's nature, according to the nature, it manifests differently. Say, you keep in one place eggs of the ten birds and hatch them. They look maybe same, or they all are eggs. But when hatched, they run according to their swabhava. No? A hen will go in one way, a duck will go in another way, a what you call hummingbird will go in another way, is it not? So everyone goes according to their sabhava, own inclination sabhava of the evolving categories. And karma of affecting the emergence of mahatta, the karma creates it's a creation of the material made mahatta is the and this Mahatattva is buddhi, intelligence, etc. From Mahatattva caused by the preponderance of the arches of Rajas and Tamas was produced Ahankar. From the Mahatattva, the ego is the highest one. So when they caused by the preponderance, there is the uh, most important Rajas and Tamas are playing most. It goes to the preponderance of the arches and was produced as Ahankara, which is dominated by Tamas and which carries with it the sense of substantiality, sens sentience and movement. O Great One, Ahankara was transformed into three aspects with the domination of Satyarajas and Tamas. Then Ahankara, three types of Ahankara they are mentioning. Of this, the first one was Vaikarika, that means has the power of knowledge, in the ego, there are three powers. One is Jnana Shakti, second is the Taija Shakti, Kriya Shakti, and another is Drabha Shakti. It is like, you know, Narayana here, Maya Shakti, that is power to create. First, preponderance of this Rajas and Tamas create an ego. Ego gets divided into three divisions. One is Jnana Shakti, Kriya Shakti, Drabha Shakti. Jnana, Knowledge part comes, creation action part comes from there, and drubbo, the material, hey, all these five elements we see in the world, all that, how it is giving a picture as if the unmanifest due to disturbance in the Satyarajas, Tamas, they get into first into Ahankara, Ahankara dividing into three divisions, and their subdivision comes. <coughs> so Ahankara was transformed into the three aspects with the dominance of the Satya Rajas and Tams. Of this, the first, also known as Vaikarika, that has the power of knowledge. Jnana Shukti, it is called the Jnana Shukti. The second is the Taijasa, it has the power of action, Kriya Shukti. And the third, the egoity of the Tamas, has the power of substantiality, Drabha Shukti. Out of the evolving egoity of the Tamas was born Akasa. <laughs> and out of that, 
there is jnana shakti tej shakti and kriya shakti so out of the evolving ego it have to persist tamas nature from tamas comes it is like this type of division has been given in vedanta sar if you have read vedanta sar you will find that they have divided the to give us actually how the creation has come at least to give some rational understanding that's why they describe like that from the tamas part now come tamas part comes the material thing natural this is a natural idea so out of the evolving ego it will be tamas was born space eh? and in the space was the sound we are talking the sound is carried in the space akasha and then whose specific property is the shabd or sound sound announces the presence of an object to the to hear some hmm? from the evolving akasha 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 vayu vayu radho adupanishad says like that so it is describing in the same line that from the space the gross space no there are five elements what are the five gross elements air water and city earth city uh air water fire space ha city of water kitty of teja the fire by you and akasha akasha is the subtlest so they are coming from the subtle side to down so first they mention akasha the subtlest thing created out of the tamas part of it and then with the from the evolving akasha came the bayu or the wind with touch as a specific property what is the specific property of the touch that is the bayu it touches the skin and we feel heat and cold as that that idea and also with the sound the characteristic property of its own cause the akasha no? sound is in the space bayu becomes prana bayu in the external bayu the wind in the external individually that's the prana which supports the body this prana stops then people say oh he is dead so so long the prana in the external comes into the individual body this is also made of five elements the earth water air and see how it is growing this body is growing because of the supply of water air fire etc no you get the calorie you give the energy you get the energy physical water you are drinking air you are breathing like that so the akasha the bayu becomes prana which supports the body ujas which energizes the senses satta which strengthens the mind and bala which makes the body power now from bayu the evolving under influence of the time karma and shabda there arose tejas fire which has form as it is specific characteristic fire has a form no it gives it a specific character and has in addition touch and sound too these are all vedanta sarva are reading now uh, the fire has two characteristics it says it has touch and sound you know when the fire burns there is a hissing sound you can hear no something burning uh, it has is a little sound can be felt so they they called the fire has two characteristics sound is touch and sound uh, now from tejas come water with taste water has taste huh? and taste has special characteristics together with the what it has it has touch water you can touch touch and sound and sound descending to it from the preceding categories so it has also water flows makes a noise from the transforming water element arose the earth element the prithvi having its specific characteristics of smell that's why all the flowers and 
where things they become fragrant. The flower comes from the earth element. The trees are coming from the earth element. The grains we eat, they are coming from the earth element. So the specific characteristics of smell as also taste, touch, from form and sound on account of the so the, this having from the transforming water element arose earth and earth had its specific characteristics. It has a smell character, taste character, touch character, form and also sound. An account of infiltration of the qualities of the earlier categories. The subtle is this Akasa. Akasa's quality is only sound. When it comes down, uh, Akasa, Bayu, Bayu has two characteristics. The sound, we know when wind blows, there is a sound. And also, Sabdo has also touch. It touch. Two characteristics for that. So, Akasa, Bayu, Bayu. By Adho, water has three characteristics. Adho. And then Adho, Akas, Advayu, Bayu, Adho, Adho, Prithivi. Prithivi has all the four other characteristics. The space characteristic is also in the uh, art element. So uh, when God wished that uh, creation be there, let there be creation, so it came step by step or at once? Uh, uh, that is a good question. It is said, uh, uh, some say in the creation process, you have to say gradually the build house is built at one point or it took little time. But Vedanta says, no, just he wished and it happened. And spontaneously it happened. And that is the magical power of Maya he created. Not little by little, little by little. But you talk about, but God's little is our maybe billion of years, no? Mm -hmm. And in that billion of years, little, little by little thing will happen. Actually, Upanishad says, in a spontaneous, in one moment it happened. Not little by little, as in creation, every we built brick wall, no? today five foot. Next day, 10 feet. Next so day. That, 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 it takes a long time for us. But it is because it's so powerful. Powerful people give order and instantly it happens. No? Uh, if some ordinary person wants to build a house, how long it will take? And if it comes the governor's order now, I want it tomorrow. Huh? In India, it happens. Don't you see that? Some big guy is going to a remote village. No? There is no road or nothing. You see, next day, all the road is finished. Whole day and night with the uh, man. It is a common story, no? One big uh, big uh, political party leader is coming, or prime minister is coming, uh, a remote village. You see, helipad is prepared whole night. Mm -hmm. He comes and, and road is ready. How it is possible? Baba, they put all the resources and in one night they prepare and things like so do. and God is the foundational power. So he wished and it happened. Brahma Vishnu, every meal will be engaged in doing his fulfilling his wish. So that's why. <clears throat> Out of the Vaikarika, the egoity of Sattva. Came mind, big mind, capital mind, not your mind, my mind, but big mind, which is presiding deity of moon, as also the ten presiding deities of the organ, Dik, Bayu, Surja, Varuna, Ashins, and five controllers of the five organs of knowledge, and Agni, Indra, Upendra. These are creation, it has come from them. Mitra and Prajapati, as the deities controlling the five organs of action. Buddhi, which manifesting as intelligence and prana, which generates the power of action, are both born out of the rajas aspect of the ego, known also as Tejasa. Therefore, out of that Tejasa have come the five organs of knowledge, 
ears, tactile organ, nose, eyes, tongue, as also the five organs of action responsible for speech, holding, walking, excretion. That means everything has come by his will, one by one, one by one. O sage, though all these above mentioned categories require, required for creation had been evolved, and they all remained separate, unable to come together and produce the combination in the shape of the worlds and the bodies of beings. Now, O says, though all these above mentioned categories required for creation had been evolved, they all remained separate. When this created, they created God, created separate identity. Though it came from one source, but God has the power to create and distinctively, categorically separate them out. It was only when the Lord, the Lord activized them by his will that they came into combination of two types, the macrocosm and the microcosm. He created at a time, but when he thought, oh, I need to create micro and macro. Macro is this, all the billions, trillions of galaxies and stars and big sun, moon, etc. No? And micro, micro is the little tiny. So micro to macro, his power is everywhere behind. Without his power, micro cannot function, macro cannot function. The combination of the categories thus produced remained as the all comprehensive cosmic shell in the cosmic causal waters. That's why Narayana is lying in the ocean they call about. Eh? That is the cosmic water, causal water. So these are mythical terms to explain the philosophy of what Vedanta teaches. It makes it easy for people to understand and uh, thinking, visualizing that God as Narayana creating this universe, how it is being created. There, that the cell in the cause causal water, absolutely immobile until the Lord employing the idea of Kala, Karma and Sabhavo and leaving it by entering into as the Jiva. So he, unless Tatsvistva Upanishad says the same idea, Tatsvistva Tadeva Nupravishat, as if he created everything and he entered into it. As it means, first he created some material object and then he was the creator and creation was the material object, as we do. A potter creates pots, a carpenter takes wood and other things, makes this stable. The carpenter is separate, the stable wood material is separate. But it is a skill of the carpenter that makes this so then he enters into it and makes it alive. So that's why it is called the he Lord created absolute until the Lord employing in it time, kala, karma, and sabdo, enlivened it by entering into the jiva. So this is a structure as it that's why in our puja we do. We puja we do, say you are doing Mother Kali Puja or Lakshmi Puja or whatever. You create a murti, no? You create the material object, eh? material ingredients, some thing to make the body of the mother. And then put clay or plaster of Paris or whatever. And then you chisel it, correct it, eh? artwork you do, and then paint it, this, that. And then we call bring it to the altar. And the pujari, the worshipper, then do prana pratishta. They establish the prana, the vital energy in it. The vital energy. That's why it's called prana. Then it becomes alive. So you, these are all like murtis. Good idea to think about. They're all uh, created. But he entered into it. Prana, the energy was 
entered into it, that's why jivas are become all active. So it happens in such a quick succession uh, that we do not have the perception how it happened. But this is a description to understand. Main thing, what does it mean? It means Narayana is the efficient cause. Narayana is the material cause. That is the Vedantic highest principle. We think this is material in, in our relative life. Carpenter is a sentient aspect person. He has the sense. He has the skill. He has the tools. And the material is the wood, screw, glue, or whatever other items are, polishing material, etc. The first it seems polishing material and glue, they are, they, and the person, carpenter, are separate. But in Vedanta, there is no separate. That's why the Vedantic concept comes that it is, he is the material cause, he is the efficient cause. Nimitta karan and upadan karan. Upadan means with the upadan, with the upadan means here the upadan is in the building, is a brick, mortar, cement, this, that. Huh? That's the upadan. And material cause, matter, or these are matter, upadan. And efficient cause, who it is, the, the, who is the efficient? Cause is behind this, this, the mystery, the mason, the laborer, uh, the cement. Cement is the matter. So some skillful person, so God is the skillful person. His intelligence is here working and that is matter. But in God's case, God's creation, there you see everything, nothing but God. As a matter, what you see as matter, it is not matter. It is the same presence of the divine. And what you are seeing as conscious, uh, relative conscious, I'm talking to you. It is a relative awareness, no? This is also by his. That means he, the Lord, is in the speech. He, the Lord, in the body. The Lord in the matter, the, the flesh, bone, everything. It is all he. That is the one unit existence that is called Satchidana. So how beautifully in a language, the mythical language, and that is the way our Vedanta books also describe. They, they first give this description like this, 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 this. And then tells us it is by the power of that divine. And it is the consciousness which penetrated inside. Again, I referred before, Tatsrishtva creating that Tadevo Nupravishat, he entered into it. Eh? As if there are two things first. And with his energy, it becomes one. That means you are raising your hand. You think you are raising, it is not. It is Narayana is raising the hand. We are all just a, a tool. And, and there is nothing but Narayana. There is not, that's why you call them, there is nothing but Rama. There is nothing but Rama Krishna. Eh? That's why the that that holy that uh, Sandal got the touch of Ramakrishna. Ramakrishna touched him, and he started seeing Rama Krishna everywhere. Huh? He said that vision, uninterrupted vision, wherever he sees, he sees only his chosen ideal. Huh? So yeah, Krishna devotee will see Krishna everywhere. Rama will be Rama. Mahakali's devotee will see Ma. And if you say they go to seeing that, get more absorbed than the rupa, the form will melt into in uh, melt into that formless absolute. That is called the so breaking the shell from within, he comes out as the universal form with countless thighs, countless legs, countless arms, countless eyes. Countless faces and countless hands. Yeah. Oh, In the Upanishad, also the same verses are there. Sahasra, Shirsa, Purusha, Sahasra, Akshi, Sahasra, Pat, Sabhuming, Vishatu, Vritya, Atta, Tishtadda, Sangulam. So, 
That is, he came out of the universal form with his countless ties. Here also uh, is verse number 35. He says, Saisha Purusas Tasmad Dandan Nimitta Nirgata Sahasra Urvi Angri Bhau Bahu Vaksha Sahasra Nayana Anana Shishavan. That's it. Their heads are innumerable, millions of heads, millions of uh, billions and millions and trillions of hand, head, ear, body. So he became like, he came out of a shell, as it were, and manifested himself, one manifested himself into the universal. And also the 14 words, Hindus has 14 words, no? Seven words upward, heaven, heaven and seven hell. So these 14 worlds in Hindu concept, they are also nothing but Narayana. The wise thinkers have identified the 14 worlds with parts of his body. The seven inferior worlds, what is called the hell, and seven being parts below the west, as if you imagine a great personality standing. No? Below the west are the seven planes. That means it is his body only, nothing else, in different levels. And superior beings are there who live above the west level. Out of his face came the Brahmana, who are the knowers of truth, who are the who can chant the Vedas, who can lead that Brahmana higher life, that type of Brahmana that the face aspect of that plane. That's why it is called Mahajana Tapa Satya. Satya Loka is at the top, almost touching that absolute truth. So face is the last expression of blissfulness. So out of his face came Brahma, Brahmana. Out of his arms came the Kshatriya. Out of his thighs came the Vaishya. And out of his feet came the Sudra. Eh? The Chaturasram, eh? Brahman, Chatyo, Vaishya, Sudra. The Indian society was divided into four. One will be leading the spiritual wisdom, they are the Brahmanas. They, there will be another group of people necessary for a peaceful country to be armed with power, military arm, military power, so that others, other countries, other people will not be able to destroy the peace eh, of that uh, highly intellectual and spiritual country. No? So India was destroyed because of those. Indian spirituality, Indian death, Brahmanas were so many Brahmanic qualities. Eh? When attack came, their weak uh, warrior group was not ready for that. Eh? Even last, in, after independence in China, attacked India unexpectedly. And that was, no one knew because they have never thought that China is a friendly country with India for thousands of years. But suddenly, and they are not prepared. In their military, they were preparing the non-military things. Uh, because they know we have no, no enemy around. But the military force is there. That's why Kshatriya is necessary to protect the innocent people, protect the country from evils. Kshatriya Vaishya, a country develops with business, no? If there is no business skill, nah, that, that country does not uh, progress. And as much business starts, so much money flow, hand to hand counts. And that business is that a class should be there who knows that skill better, no? And then the other one is the Shudra, the working class community, no? who are builders, masons, these, that. If uh, Masar, there is one, one story we remember that Mother Sita one asked Ram, Ram Chandra that you know these people are so good, so much suffering, so make them, give them enough money and things so that they have no suffering anymore. Okay. Rama says, no, no, it is not a good idea. 
uh, because they will not, then they will be in difficulty. Well, no, 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 you have to do. So he gave okay. Everyone was happy. And now the palace started leaking. Then Masita asked Rama, Ramji, Rama, bring some, uh, the roof is leaking. How can I sleep in the house? Then, but no roof, roofers are available. Because they're happy people. They forgot their own, own skills. <laughs> so then uh, Ramji said to Masita, see, you wanted everyone to be happy and we give them and they've lost their own business, all skills, and so now you have to suffer. So in a society, perfect society, four arms should be there. One should be very brain, should be very sharp and brahmini brain, not, not disturbing, but it is peaceful, which will bring peace, joy, and blessings to the society, that type of. And then second will be there, that second thing will be necessary where they will be, arms will be strong, and military protection. Third will be business, will be so much money, affluence that will come to perfect society. And everyone should contribute. Some people contributing the brain level, someone is contributing the physical level, someone is contributing in the management of money level, and someone is contributing the service of others. So this is the in the, in the face, na? Brahmanas, and from Brahmana came out this four class. And then the Bhur Loka is identified with his West, Bhuvar Loka, which is navel, Swar Loka, which is heart, Mahar Loka, which is chest, Gana Loka, which is neck, Tapo Loka, which is two lips and the Satya Loka with the head. That means giving some idea that his body is nothing but the body of Narayan. Uh, that according to the height of experience, the highest is the brain. And there goes the Brahmanic. So Satya Loka, Tapo Loka, etc. Atala is his hip. Now he's going down from the west level. Atala is the hip, Bitala is the thighs, Sutala is his knees, Talatala is his four legs, Mahatala his ankles, Rasatala the top of his feet, and the Patala the under part of his feet. Just in concept. Uh, he's such a, that's why he's a Birat Purusha. He is a grand personality as it were, vast and is unlimited. On Bali's head. Mm. Bali has gone to Patala. Ah, he went to Patala. <laughs> the under part of his feet. Thus he became the world. Thus he became the world. That means actually it is Narayana who has become the lower plane to the higher plane. There's nothing but Narayana. That's why you see Brahma can is see God everywhere. To the who is good and who is holy. And who is not holy, everywhere is God. The identification of locus, regions of the universe, can also be done in another way. His feet from the Bhurlok, the navel, the Bhuvarlok, and the head, the Saktalok. So this is the way uh, it, it leading to the idea that everything we see is the Narayana we see. Eh? And even in the gross material thing, the earth element, water element, fire element, they are also Narayana. That means you see, though we are reading Bhakti book, here Narayana is nothing but Narayana. Narayana, that's why I chanted the verse which we read the other day, verse number five and six, beautiful. Narayana para Veda, Vedas and Narayana. Deva, Narayana, Nangaja. You think of so many gods and goddesses. They are also Narayana. Narayana Paralta. Narayana Paraloka. All the planes, just now we explain. All the different planes are nothing but Narayana. Narayana Paramaka. Narayana Paro Jugu. Narayana Paro Tapo. Narayana Parangyanam. Narayana Parangati. 
Everything is Narayana, everything is Narayana. That concept has been given. So any question came? So we end here. Uh, this is the end of the, uh, not end, but we, uh, this is the second book, chapter 6, verse 42. Is the, we end here today and we'll study from 40. Oh, no, this is the end, yeah, right. This is the end of the chapter 6, 5. So we'll start chapter 6 next day. If you have any question, we can now talk about that. Om Shanti 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 Hi Hari Om Tat Sat Sri Ram Krishna Arpanamastu. Okay, so for now, question. Is God enters into our body? Eh? If God has entered into our body and our consciousness, then Prarata belongs to who? Who does karma and who is the result of karma? Right. Uh, actually, if we can really feel that way, there is no karma of yours. <laughs> it is all God's play. God is playing. You have no place. So why God uh, does bad karma? And no. God does play. When, when in the play, there is no good, no bad. It's a fun. So that's why if we are totally egoless, then really we have nothing to worry about. We don't do anything. There's a lot of play going on, everything, good, bad. Uh, that is the greatness of our uh, traditional wisdom. No? That point is there. Uh, Ramakrishna in the gospel, we find that that the one sadhu was many, going into the begging or something, and somebody beat him into almost he was unconscious and almost going to die, as it were. With much care, when he was brought back to the ashrama, and they were with much care, his sense came back and they asked, who have done this to you? He said that he who is feeding me the milk to bring my awareness, consciousness, it is the same person who has beaten me. See? So it is really in the eyes of a eye of a Brahmagani, then everything is God. Uh, and then devotee also. Devotee also say what? Oh Lord, let thy will be done. I am nobody. You want me to do this? Okay. Whatever you like. It is yours. I'll give an example. Uh, this, these are very much uh, manifested in the life of the Brahma Kalis. No arts of truth. They don't make any distinction between good and bad. Because like a child. Think about the baby. Because mind is baby's mind is so innocent, he has no sense of so-called good or bad, so-called uh, auspicious, inauspicious. No, children have no sense. The soil cloth or a pure cloth, they have no distinction. Suppose he, if you bring a gun in before the child and try to show it, will be scared to run away. The child will catch it and put it in the mouth. Because they don't think that it's anything other than my mommy gives them sweet milk. This is also maybe something juicy and sweet. <laughs> because that is the thing. For the child, there is no distinction. So we should be childlike, innocent, so much dedicated and devoted to God that there is nothing but God in the eyes. That's the culmination of uh, Sarvang. Vishnu Mahavaja, that story, see, Sankara. Mm -hmm. Sankara saw <coughs> that one, <coughs> then Sakat Shiptagur uh, wanted to give that a, a, a knowledge to Shankara. 
So he was a Brahmin, and in those days, so much of caste system and other things that was engaged into it. And his purity came out of the Ganga, holy Ganga, taking a shower, bath, bathing, and coming. And he saw that there is one uh, dog, uh, one lecher, uh, outcast, was sitting on a dog, an Indian street dog, not, not American dogs. <laughs> <laughs> So Indian street dog, dirty and they, and he collected some one bread from the dustbin or something. And the crazy guy, he, having a bite in his own mouth and feeding the, uh, another bite to the, this dog and sitting on the dog, dirty dog. And that was happening in the middle where Sankara wanted to go to the Siva temple. And he said, Sankara says, get out of my way. And yeah, this dirty, get out of my Duram Apsarore Chandala. Because he's outcast, he has no sense of purity. No, who eats like that? And dirty dog in the street, dustbin food, eating one bite here, another bite here, joyfully, cheerfully. <laughs> and then he said, then Sankara, he replied, uh, Vishnu Puri Sthito Vishnu. Vishnu Khadati Vishnu. Kotha Ghaso Sire Vishnu. Sarvam Vishnu Mayam Jagat. He is telling to Shankara, Vishnu Puri, this you are seeing dog. There is no dog. It is Lord Vishnu. And I, you see, I am an outcast. Vishnu, I am Vishnu. Khadati, I am feeding. Vishnabe, the dog. You see dog. I am feeding Vishnu. Vishnu feeding the Vishnu. And you, Shankara, you are smiling at me. You are Vishnu. Katham Hasasi. Why are you smiling? Ridiculing me. Katham Hasasi, Re Vishnu. Oh Vishnu. Why are you ridiculing me? Vishwarbhang Vishnu Mayang Jagat. There is nothing but Lord Vishnu everywhere. And that, in a moment, Shankara got the highest wisdom. You know? That your question. Good, bad, this is in our level. And we should be. To improve our character from the tamas to rajas, rajas to sattva, and transcend sattva. That's what we should have to do. But for a noir of truth, that is everything is permeated by one. Okay, so here is a question. Does Vedanta advocate the life of renunciation and detachment for its adherents? Uh, it is Vedanta uh, advocate means you look at that. What do you mean by Vedanta? Vedanta means that you want to see the divine or you have to feel the divine everywhere. Is it not? Oneness. So if we do not get out of this attachment to the limited objects, Vedanta, the infinite absolute, how will you reach that infinite absolute? If I don't give up my clingingness to small things, how can I reach that which is infinite? I'll be holding on to that. Therefore, detachment is necessary, not as a, not thinking I'm losing something. But I have to gain something higher. That's why Atman or Brahman, we say, love God. And say, not this, not this, not this. So that's why pessimism, it appears pessimism. Pessimistic to give up, not this, not this, detach, renounce. These are very bad words. Why shall I, if everything is Narayana, why shall I give up? Do you understand that? Narayana, then it is okay. But you only say in the figure of speech. So for us, we will have to do this detachment. And that's why detachment and renunciation. We must have to, being a student of Vedanta, to renounce what? Renounce the attachment. Renounce the clingingness to the petty things of life. Petty objects of life. Attachment, we are, see, when our mind is involved into some material world, it does not go to think about divine. 
So if I want really to go to my thought in divine and absolute joy, I will have to give up this petty joy. I will have to, if one wants a job of, say, um, $100,000 job, and he says, I will cling on to my 20,000 job, I will not give up. I mean, you can do that if you have time, but in the same time, eight hours time, you cannot do 20,000, that's also 100,000. So if you want 100,000, you have to give up 20,000. So that is called renunciation, and that is not renunciation actually. It is rather running for higher things, running for greater joy. So our goal is the Atman or Brahman or God, what we are talking about, Narayana. If that is to be achieved, we must have to engage our mind in a higher thought, higher level of uh, state of mind, no? so that mind is not involve much into the worldly little things. Another question, if it is all play, we know we are not the agent, then karma cannot adhere to us. Really, you are correct. That if it is all play, if we know that it is all play of God, then I, who is working through this play of God? But really, are you really understand this? Or we just say that it is Lord's play. Then I will do whatever I do. I'll say, it is Lord has done. Huh? That story will come then again. That one man, he was thinking that he has, he sees that God do, does everything. And he actually, whether, uh, while he is really responsible for doing something very bad. And when he did that, he was put to jail or to court. And he is arguing in front of the judge. I do not do anything. I am Atman. I am Atman. I don't do anything. My no karma. It's my hand did. And hand did. And then he said, yes, I am not punishing Atman. I am punishing the hand which did this work. And the ego sense. And so, yes, if really one is perfected in this spiritual practice and knows really that everything is God's will going on, Actually, it is nothing. Ramakrishna's story can explain us very simply. Ramakrishna said, there is an honest man when he was sleeping in the hot summer in the outside his room and, and just in the cool to get body cool and sleep well. And suddenly there came a gang of robbers and they have stolen some material from someone's house and they are searching for somebody to carry on. They saw this guy is little strong and they forced him to get out of the bed. He was lying. He pulled him out and said, carry these things. So they put all the stolen things on his hand and they were going. And by that time it happened, the police came and caught them. But, but everyone ran away because they are standard thieves. They know how to escape. But this guy was caught. And then, then, then he was taken, police took it to jail and to the judge. And the judge, before the judge said, what has happened? Judge asked, what has happened? They say, by Rama's will, that was a hot night, warm night. By Rama's will, I could not sleep in my room. By Rama's will, I was sleeping in the outside and the cool breeze was there, I was almost asleep. By Rama's will, a gang bang of robbers came. By Rama's will, they forced me to wake up and carry this thing. By Rama's will, I, the police came. And by Rama's will, they could manage to escape. By Rama's will, I was caught. By Rama's will, I was put to the jail last night. And by Rama's will, I am here before you, sir. And then then judge, they freed him because he is innocent. Everything, Rama's will. And the suffering, punishing, and everything has happened in life, it is Rama's will. So that is a state. When until we reach that state, we should have to do the judgment of good and bad and build up our life with purity and strength. Okay. Thank you. We'll meet you again in the next class at 7:30. That will be what? That will be Shanti Gita, the message of Krishna. Again, to Arjuna, when his son was killed on the 13th day 
अभी मन में ओम शांति 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 पीस पीस पीस